sports top 10 reasons to watch the World Gymnastics Championships and the event finals. Number 10. On the floor, the world all-round champion Li Xiaoshuang of China. In the number nine spot on the uneven bars, the emerging diva Svetlana Horkina of Russia. Eighth position belongs to the former world champion Ivan Ivankov. He draws the line on the P-bars. Lucky number seven finds the women's all-round champion Lilia Podkopaeva in the spotlight. Six, if you can stay on the pommels for that many moves, Huang Wang Dong might take the challenge. On to number five, and Romania's vaulting superstar, Gina Gojian. She'll get some airtime with us. As will the man in the number four spot, Alexei Nemov of Russia. Talk about a rising star. Three, and the queen of the beam, Little Mo of China. She will walk the walk at the Sundome. The number two excuse to watch today is the ringmaster, Italy's two-time world champion, Yuri Kecki. And the number one reason to stay tuned, who else? The bad boy, Vitaly Sherbo. He's back, and you can guess where he's headed. CBC Sports is proud to present the Air Canada World Gymnastics Championships. Here are your hosts, Scott Russell and Carol Orchard. The Sundome in Sabai on the final day of the Air Canada World Gymnastics Championships. Today, the podium is reserved for the artisans of each apparatus as we present the individual event finals. In all, 10 gold medals are up for grabs in this packed arena in rural Japan. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Sun Dome and the World Gymnastics Championships. I'm Scott Russell, and as always, I'm joined by Carol Orchard. Carol, today is a day for the individuals, the specialists on each of the event finals, and really the story is for each how they got here. It's been a very difficult road. It's been an incredible battle. Each athlete has to combine their compulsory and optional score on each event to qualify as the top eight in the world, so you know they're going to put on a great show. We're going to see some great individual performances. One thinks of Yuri Kecki of Italy on the rings, two times the world championship gold medalist. He's always great. But another story to keep in mind, several of these athletes here have qualified for four event finals, and that's a story of consistency. And consistency was the key. Vitaly Shirbo and Li Xiaoshuang have qualified for four events out of the six, but there's even more consistency on the women's side. Shannon Miller of USA, Lilia Potskopaeva of Ukraine, and Mighty Mo of China qualify for all four finals with incredible all-round performances. But today, the all-round pressure is off, and it's a one-shot deal to find out who's the best in the world on each event. All right, we're going to look forward to some great performances. We also have a packed show. We'll feature a conversation with the controversial American coach, Bella Caroli. Carol Orchard's Chalk Talk looks at the Japanese roots of gymnastics double gold medalist from the LA Olympics Bart Connor will stop by our broadcast location but most importantly we'll watch 10 medal events and start with Olympic champion Vitaly Sherbo's quest for four gold of his own if you are a good gymnast if you are a professional and uh, uh, you want yourself you want people to think about you that you are very good you have to be all the time in the top so what about Ivankov? I like him very much. He's my very good friend. But he's good in one competition, next competition, he's just so bad. You know, and name of the same, he, he's not so stable. He's young. And they are young, you know, they don't have uh, this experience what I have. What a story of consistency in the last eight years in every major international competition he's been in. Vitaly Sherbo's never been lower than third. On the floor exercise, well, Carol, he's just a master. He certainly is. He is loaded with experience. I really find the entry into this floor routine interesting. Most men start with the biggest trick they've got, but Sherbo chooses to do his front tumbling pass. Then he really wows the judges with this one. Full twisting double layout. What the judges really like about Sherbo are his landings. Everyone is solid. He really calculates it, anticipates it, and locks it in. Everything with Sherbo just so together, as you said. World champion on the floor exercise last year at Brisbane. And you just know he'd like one more shot at that gold medal. Like to add to his collection, I think. 
Now, you hear the bell. That tells him he's been out there for 50 seconds and he's met the minimum requirement. He has up to 70 seconds to finish the routine. It's not going to take that long. Double layout. Just a slight hop on the landing, but everybody at the Sun Dome likes what they've seen from Vitaly Sherbo. Watch the incredible height. He is still lifting on the second salto. Anticipates the landing in true Sherbo fashion. How about that for a men's score? 9-8-1-2 for Sherbo, the first volley on the floor. Next is Grigory Masutin, the 1991 world champion from Indianapolis. He competes for Ukraine, also a great floor worker. Scott, I was really surprised he's even entered this event today. He qualified, but with that sore ankle, he is putting on an impressive performance. That was a double ale full out. Oh, he's got to be feeling that on that ankle, but he wants a shot at the medal, obviously. Missed the all-around competition because of an ankle injury sustained on the vault in the compulsory competition. Well, he certainly looks determined. He doesn't seem to be letting anything interrupt his concentration. This is a requirement, and all the men seem to put it for some reason in the last corner. I think it's so they can rest. Now, he'll wait till he hears the bell. That'll guarantee that he's not under time. Wow, double layout. Just slight trouble at the end of the routine, but on a bad ankle, Grigory Masutin of Ukraine has come through. This is an incredible tumbling line. Round up back handspring, watch him take off. There's the first layout. Double layout, full out, in a very nice laid out position. Absorbs the shock. Nice wink for the camera. 9762 for Grigory Masutin. Now here is the world champion, won it the all around title yesterday. Lee Xiao Shuang, 21 years old. Final say on the floor. Scott, I'm really curious as to what he's going to throw. Yesterday, to win the title, he held back and did a simple double layup, but not today. Double twisting, double back. It's obvious he is aggressively going for the goal today. Beautiful front tumbling pass. Front tumbling is mandatory. Each male gymnast must show it. The women have a choice. The men don't. They must show front tumbling. He and Vitaly Sherbo have a little battle going. Sherbo said yesterday that judging held him back into silver medal position. But he and Lee Xiao Shuang are going head to head today in the event finals on the floor. And I think Lee is out to prove a point. I don't think he appreciated that comment of Sherbo, and I think that double double might have been just for him. There's the mandatory scale. The men use it to rest and really focus for the last line. For Lee, it's got to be a big one. And it is double layout. Finishes up nicely. Sherbo had a 9-8-1-2. What's in store for Lee Xiao Shuang of China? Well, I think the judges have a real dilemma here. Is it Sherbo or is it Lee? It's going to be a tough choice with tricks like this. Incredible. Looks for the landing, anticipates it, and absorbs that tremendous impact. 9775, which means the gold medal goes to Vitaly Sherbo. Lee is second. Grigory Masutin, the bronze. Sherbo, gracious in victory. You know, I did not perfect, but I did very well. And uh, two days ago in a press conference, I said that the uh, yellow color better than silver color. So you see, I got to the yellow color. It's more beautiful. Coming up next, the women on the vault. They're warming up as we speak at the Sun Dome, plotting their course. If lasting power is the mark of a champion, then no one is as timeless as the great Ludmila Tureshova. Her elegance was her hallmark. Tureshova won back-to-back -back world championships in 1970 and 74. And it was Tureshova, not Olga Corbett, who struck gold in 1972 at the Munich Olympics. She remains a graceful symbol of her sport to this day. Tired of working your fingers to the bone? From Sabai, Japan, on CBC. Brought to you by Air Canada. Welcome to our world.
Like a Hollywood clone, this pair of giant red glasses dominates the approach to Sabai. They are a dead giveaway to the city's industrial prowess. Sabai at factories like Koki Masanaga produces 90% of Japan's eyeglass frames. The founder, Gozimo Masanaga, established a company of impeccable reputation. Proudly displayed in Koki's museum are the spectacles of Hirohito. The Japanese emperor was never without his glasses, his frames familiar to millions the world over. The man who constructed glasses for Hirohito is Nobushiko Sasaki, and he works at Koki to this day. In a scant 80 years since the optical industry and its technology were introduced to Sabai from Osaka, business has boomed. The challenge now is for Sabai's optical industry to capture world markets. It's projected that Koki Masunaga and local companies like it will help make that happen in the 21st century. Currently, one-third of the total production is for export, 47% of which is destined for the United States. Already, the development of the burgeoning eye fashion industry is putting Sabai and companies like Koki Masanunga on the map. On to the women's vault, and this is Simona Amanar, 16 years old, of Romania. Great vaulter, she won the European Cup final in Rome in June. And Scott, she is just dynamite on this event. Very explosive. Your Chenko double twist. This is a really difficult vault to do. There's a round off approach, back handspring. She's got to bump it up, twist fast, because two twists have to be completed in time to anticipate the landing. Score for the first is a 9-8. The competitors do two vaults in the event finals. The scores are averaged for a total. And the vaults must be completely different. And it is Sukahara half-off front layout. 9-7-6-2 for the second vault for an average of 9-7-8-1. That's going to be very tough to beat. Here's someone that can do it. Gina Gojan of Romania, 18 years old, won the vault at the World Championships in Brisbane last year. This is a tougher event for Gina. She's technically capable but she doesn't have two strong vaults. Yurchenko one and a half. She's a very stable vaulter. This is a tough one to do well. A little execution error with the legs, and she can't see the ground at all, so she just has to go by sense and feel. First vault, 9-7-7-5 for Gojan of Romania, and here's the second. This may be where she has a tougher time to get a second vault. That's a tough one. And she really pulled it out at the end. 9637 for an average of 9706. Can't catch her teammate Simona Aminar. The all-around women's champion Lilia Podkopayeva, 17 years old of Donetsk, Ukraine. Lily is a strong vaulter. In fact, this is where she won the all-around title yesterday. And that's an incredible vault. Your Chenko half on, front pike half out. That should be worth 10 plus. This is tough. Round off onto the board, but she does a half turn before she makes contact. There's the front pike, half out. There's a lot happening up in the air in a short period of time. Great execution, and there's the reward, a 9-8, which keeps her in contention for the gold medal, but remember, she has to stick a second vault. And again, the pressure's on. It has to be a different vault. For her, it was the same vault, but without the round off entry. So that means that Simona Aminar is still in the driver's seat for the second vault. 9.762 for Podkopaeva. 9.781 is the result in terms of an average, and that ties her with Aminar. Mo Hulan of China now, 15 years old from Beijing. We saw her on the beam have trouble in the all-around competition. She came to this meet with a pretty big vault. She's just getting used to it now. Your Chenko double twist, a little short. She's going to have to take a good two tenths, three tenths deduction for that short landing. Aminar and Podkopaeva tied and watching on for a little Mo score. She looks high enough off the horse, but she doesn't rotate quickly enough. Twist looks good, but she needs to rotate faster to get her feet back unto, under her on the landing. 9-6-2-5 the result. Long way to go to catch a medal now with a second ball. And it's tough to be dynamic and powerful when you're dealing with a little disappointment. Ah, but she handles it really well. Front from Pike for the half. 
9662 for the second ball. 9643 is the average. She can't catch a medal. Simona Aminar and Lilia Podkopaeva tie for the gold. No silver medal. Gina Gojan catches the bronze with a 9706. On to the men's pommel, a very difficult event. And for Switzerland, Lee Donghua with an interesting story to tell. It is interesting. And being the romantic that I am, I love this story. He was a member of the Chinese national team living in China. There was a tourist visiting, and he happened to meet her, fall in love, and they got married. Since then, he has moved back to Switzerland to be with her. And just two or three days prior to Dortmund, he got his citizenship. So this is his second world championships representing Switzerland. And believe me, they are completely ecstatic at the addition of Lee to their national team. Needless to say, Lee is a pommel horse expert. Beautiful extension on that flare work. Won a bronze medal in Brisbane at the World Championships on this event for Switzerland. And Scott, you can tell just by the duration of the routine, he's got a lot packed in there. Lee dong of Switzerland with an outstanding effort on the pommel horse. You won't see many like that. Remember yesterday we talked about single pommel work in the chalk dock portion. Well, Lee does it better than most. Total control. It's rare that you'll see a score that high regardless of the event in men's competition. 9-7-6-2 on the pommels for Lee dong -Wah. Now Wang Wadong of China, 18 years old from Guangdong. He was on the Chinese team that won the gold medal here in Sabai. And talk about your single pommel work. He does it really well, too. It's demanding because the base of support is so small. Very risky. Lots of room for error, but he's not making any. The Chinese are so deep in terms of their ability here. Li Xiaoshuang, of course, has done so well. A bit of a stumble there by Wang Wadong, but continues to go. Really nice flared work. Now he breaks into these required scissors. Looks good there. Now here's his Magyar travel, down on the leather, up on the handle, down on the leather. Magyar was a famous Hungarian gymnast. He owned the pommel horse. Finishes up with a nice dismount. He's got to catch a 9-7-6-2 by Li dong -Hua. Wang Wadong of China, here's another look. Absolutely gorgeous flare work. Check out his full extension, incredible speed into the half spindle. 9-7-3-7, oh so close, but not quite there. He's in second position. Now to one of the local heroes, Yoshiaki Hadakata of Japan, 23 years old, from Tokyo. And Scott, he performs with total confidence on this event. Ho oh, ho, nice spindle in the flare position. And another one. Now, as impressive as that flare work is, the gymnasts are not allowed to do more than 40% of the routine in flare. That's why you see him transferring over to the double leg circle work. Very complete gymnast. He was sixth in the all-around competition. He's really working this routine well. Now, here he breaks into the required scissors. I still haven't figured out why it's a requirement, other than it's challenging to stop the routine and start it again. It always seems to break the rhythm. Indeed, very disruptive, but Hatakata brings it back together and finishes off a nice routine. All kinds of great support for the Japanese team here. They won the silver medal in team competition. They're the local heroes. Tremendous physical strength and mental tenacity are required to be a champion on this event. And the result of 9737 for Hatakata. So the results in the pommel horse, Li Dong Wa of Switzerland takes the gold. Hatakata and Wang Wadong of China tie for the silver medal. When we return, Italy's Yuri Keki is jumping for a chance to make it three straight at the World Championships. Uh oh. Looks like systems problems. How long before the unit fails? Who knows? What about the backup? Son, that is the backup. And they make them in Montreal. UPS introduces early AM service to the States. Bonjour. Bonjour, Montreal. Guaranteed overnight from Canada to U.S. business centers before 8 a.m. You'll have it by 8 tomorrow. 8 a.m.? <sighs> Somebody up there locks us. UPS early AM to the USA. Well, there used to be there was money left at the end of the month. Now there's month left at the end of the money. We 
We hear you, Canada. I have to think about every dime I spend. We hear you, Canada. And that's why we're not just holding prices down, we're really lowering them. We've just dropped the price of Tide almost a dollar to just $5.63. And five months of oil from $187 to $114. Walmart, where every day costs less because... We hear you, Canada. Walmart, where every day costs less. Okay, listen up, there's a new sports select game in town. It's called Point Spread, and it works like this. Every game has a favorite and an underdog. Usually the favorite will eat the underdog's lunch. So Point Spread was invented. The favorite just can't win. He has to cover the spread that evens things out. And the winnings make it worth your while. So bone up on new Point Spread from Sports Select. Oh, it's an easy way to get in the game. So Tommy said you went to scout camp all weekend. It was okay. I hear you get to do a lot of great stuff. That's pretty good. Hey Andrew, did you get to go canoeing? Yep. You guys should just give it a try. Scouting. Share the adventure. Try it! Contact your local Scout Canada office today. Michael Schumacher, defending world champion, again faces the challenge of contender Damon Hill at the Pacific Grand Prix tonight, late night. Welcome back to rural Japan and the Air Canada World Gymnastics Championships. Football follows our show. Let's send you back home to Edmonton and Scott Oak. Well, Scott, how Thanks very much, fellas. We'll look forward to that game. And of course, I'm joined by Carol Orchard, and we're now moving towards the uneven bars. And Mo Hulen of China, little Mo, has had her troubles at the World Championships, looking for some redemption on this event. Scott, China is unquestionably the most innovative team in the entire world on this event. And you can see it right there in her transition skill to the high bar. But this is her event, and this is her move. That's the Mo. The Chinese coaching staff have borrowed that skill from men's high bar. The originator of it is actually Mitch Gaylord from the United States. Little Mo scored a 9-8-6-2 on this event in all-around competition. And I'm sure she'll do just as well today. Everything's looking great. Beautiful, Tkachev. Her coach is stepping in for her big dismount, and that's fine. Double layout. Only a slight deduction for that very small step. All right, there's the smile back on her face. We've been missing it for a little bit. This trick is all hers, named in her honor. That's the Mo, and believe me, she's the only one in the world that would want to do it. That's a big one. Great blind stab at the bar by those two hands, and what a great result. 9-8-3-7 for Mo Hulan of China on the uneven bars. Now we look at Lilia Podkopayeva, the all-around gold medalist. She already won a gold medal on the vault here in the event finals today. The reason Lilia is such a favorite with the audience and the judges is the fact that she has a perfect blend of impeccable technique and daring skills. Just like that. Hop giant full, another one, right through to a gear. That's three release moves in a row. Podkopayeva in all four event finals. She won the uneven bars at the European Cup in Rome in June. All she has left now is a big dismount, and it is half in, half out. <laughs> Mo Hulan of China has a 9837 already. She truly is the definition of impeccable execution. Neat line right down to her toes. The force or the impact alone of these big skills is enough for other gymnasts to break their alignment, but not Lilia. Sure hands on the bar. 9-8-3-7. That ties her with Little Mo of China. Here's Svetlana Horkina of Russia, 16 years old, and on the uneven bars in all-around competition, 9-9-1-2. And at five foot, four inches, you think that this may be a weak event for her? Uh-uh. She uses that elegant line to her advantage and really, truly challenges the Chinese with regard to innovation. Beautiful work. Everything is in line, right in handstand. Oh, yeah. All eyes on 
one of the new divas, Svetlana Horkina of Russia. And she likes that routine. Everybody in the building does. Watch how she arches over the low bar to generate that incredible swing for that double tuck full out. 9-9-1-2 in all-around competition, a 9-9 here in the event finals. And that makes her the gold medal champion. Mohulan and Lilia Podkopayeva will tie for the silver medal. Now to the rings. And the ringmaster himself, Yuri Keki, 26 years old of Italy. The last 11 international competitions he's competed in, he's won the gold medal on the rings. Just a story of dominance. Oh, that's for sure. That song, Nobody Does It Better, this could be his theme song. Keki is respected by everyone around the world as the best on rings. And he starts right away with a nice Maltese. Now watch, he presses up to a planche. Only Paul O'Neill from USA, the originator of that skill, does it as well. That's his inverted cross, nice and steady. Swings to a Maltese. Now watch this back lever. Picture perfect iron cross. Look at the confidence he's got going there. Power and control personified. Yuri Keki, two times the World Rings champion, trying for three in a row, only the dismount now to set up for. And I don't think there's any question about his ability at this point. He's on a roll, going for it. Double layout, there it is. Sticks the dismount, signals, and he knows he's done what is his hallmark. He's done the very best. The Lord of the Rings, Yuri Keki. Inverted cross, holds it well, swings to a perfectly locked in Maltese, and shows proper angle holds it. Look how low his shoulders are as compared to his hands. That's perfect. Oh, yes. 9-8-5 for Cechi of Italy on the rings. That will be very tough to beat. But with a shot at it, Jordan Jobchev of Bulgaria, 22 years old. Fourth at the European Cup final on the rings. But as we said, he'll be hard-pressed to catch Yuri Cechi. Jordan is actually Bulgaria's pride and joy. This is a tough event to qualify for event finals, and he's representing his team really well. It's an L-cross pull. He's going to press up to handstand. That's required. They all have to show one of those. Oh, but look at that. He swings right into an inverted cross. Look how low he is. Amazing. Lowers to a Maltese. I think that one was even lower than Keki's, quite frankly. Oh, beautiful work. What makes Jordan's strength move so incredible is the fact that he swings into them and then stops on a dime. That's tough to do. A little bit of movement on the rings that you didn't see with Keki's routine. That might hurt his score just a touch. Definitely. Ready for the dismount. Full twisting double layout. Controlled perfectly. Jordan Jovchev of Bulgaria trying to catch a 9-8-5 by Yuri Keki. There's Keki on the sidelines. Now watch, Jordan has to throw the rings away as hard as he can to avoid hitting them with his feet as he completes the full twisting double layout. Lands his dismount nicely, stands up straight. There's the score, 9-7-5. Not enough to get Keki. Puts him in second position. Romania's had a great world championships. Here's one of the stalwarts of the team, Dan Barenka. Not a very big guy, 23 years old, part of the bronze medal team. Ah, oh, but he's got a very nice Azarian to Iron Cross. The Azarian is named after the former Soviet Union superstar. Look at that, showing great strength moves. Oh, he's holding that Maltese really well. Nice low Iron Cross. Again, check out the line between his shoulders and his hands. Bronze medal at the World Championships in the rings in Brisbane. Getting into a little trouble there in that handstand, but it controls it well to the L-cross. All of those positions have to be held for a minimum of two seconds, but these guys, they really exceed that, that limit. Double layout. Flaps his wings, but little Dan Barenka hangs on at the end of the routine, and Yuri Keki won't celebrate yet. 
Rink and score still to come. He throws the rings away as he pulls a really good double layout, but he lands with his feet slightly in front of him. That's why he has to circle his arms to try and save that landing. 9-7-6-2, not enough to catch Yuri Kecki of Italy. There's the celebration. The gold medal goes to Yuri Kecki. Dan Barinka has to settle for the silver. Jordan Jochev, the bronze. Kecki continues to dominate. Now I am very, very happy. Um, uh, for me, this is uh, the, the, the more difficult competition that I, I did before because my opponents uh, are always more strong and, uh, and today was very, very difficult. I was very nervous, but now I'm very relaxed and very satisfied. When we return, they'll get airborne with the vault as the Air Canada World Gymnastics Championships continue. Air Canada, welcome to our world. We carry you to places familiar and exotic. Along the way, we carry the teams, the players and the athletes who can hush thousands or bring them roaring to their feet. Air Canada is a sponsor of many premium events in the world of sports and is now helping to bring you the best in the world of gymnastics. Well, the big news out of the NHL, McDonald's NHL Muppet Mania has arrived. Play NHL Muppet Mania at McDonald's. Collect NHL Muppet Color Team Crest on specially marked packaging, and you could win great prizes, like one of 50 all-new 1996 Mercury Sable or Ford Taurus vehicles. Bauer inline skates, Nestle Crunch Bars, or $100,000 cash instantly. So, Kermit, what's the toughest thing about playing hockey in the NHL? Skating with flippers. Play NHL Muppet <laughs> Mania at McDonald's today. Reveal the natural beauty of your wood with Pledge. Pledge has cleansing conditioners to gently lift dirt and fingerprints. So you see that beautiful shine every time you dust. Pledge, let the natural beauty of your wood shine through. S.E. Johnson Wax. It's the night the stars come out. Kurt Browning. Jose Schwinar, Brian Orser, Christy Yamaguchi, Scott Hamilton. The world's best for a night you'll never forget. Sun Life Stars on Ice, a CBC special presentation. Tonight, presented by Eaton's. Not far from the sidewalks of New York. The pace quickens on the fast track of Belmont Park. Thundering thoroughbreds pick up the challenge of racing's richest day. The Breeders' Cup, live Saturday. Welcome back to Japan and the World Championships. This is one of the high-tech driving ranges which dot the urban landscape. Skyscraper-like nets, a two-tiered T area. People play golf in the center of the city, and that's because it's just too expensive to play on the course about the equivalent of 250 Canadian dollars. Now there's been a boom in this sport recently in Japan. In the sport of gymnastics, however, there is a long and rich history here. And with more on that, let's send it down the fairway to Carol Orchard. Japan is an ancient society built upon centuries of tradition. Practices are handed down from generation to generation. The focus of this culture has always been on artistry and perfection, and the same holds true in gymnastics. Known throughout the world for their commitment to excellence, the Japanese male gymnasts boast a brilliant history of innovation. Endo, Kazamatsu, Sukahara, Yamashita, these are the cornerstones of gymnastics. In 1964, Endo invented the high bar element named in his honor. Endo circles are still performed today by both men and women on bars. In 62, Yamashita vaulted his name into the history books by perfecting the handspring pike vault. At the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona, the Yamashita half was the women's compulsory vault. Sukahara made his mark on two different events. In 72, he originated the full twisting double back high bar dismount. So out of this world, many refer to it as the moon salto. But he is undoubtedly best remembered for his Sukahara vault. 
The women will be performing his vault during the compulsory competition in the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. 74 was a memorable time for Kazumatsu. His name will live on for his original vault. Canadian Curtis Hibbert brought the Kazumatsu into the 90s with a new twist. From the 1960 Olympics in Rome through to the 1978 World Championships in Strasbourg, the Japanese men's team won 10 consecutive gold medals. No other nation has ever built such a dynasty. They're hoping these championships could be the turning point for recapturing past glories. But their contribution to gymnastics is so much more than just the victories. Their place in history is secure. Their legacy is eternal. Chalk Talk with Carol Orchard, presented by Hertz. On to the men's vault, Alexei Nemov of Russia touted as the next great superstar. He didn't qualify for the all-around final. Now he has a chance in the event finals to shine. First of all, we have to do our job. To compete, to do a program so that we can do it in our power. That is, to go all the way. Not to fall where we can try as much as it is possible. Ну и, конечно, как получится, там мы сделаем свое дело и будем стараться бороться за первое место. Carol, a really likable guy, one of your favorites in terms of this competition, but he had a rough go in the all-around qualifying. He really is. I think everybody thinks he should be the world champion. He just hasn't been able to pull it together yet. But this could be a second chance for him. He could be the world champion on at least one event. Oh, he's got it. Your Chenko half on, front pike half. Same story for the men as the women. They must vault twice and take an average of their scores. Here's a great shot of that round off onto the board, but he has to do a half turn, front pike, just like Chris Burley from Canada, but Nemoff adds a half twist. Beautiful vault. 9762, so a strong start for Alexei Nemov. Won the vault at the European Cup. Now both vaults are average, but they must be different. And his is. He left out the half twist. Okay, so the crowd puts a smile on Alexei Nemov's face, and he's got a bit of that swagger. The white lines on the landing mat are there for the judge's benefit. The first three are areas of deduction for short vaults, but Nemov lands beyond the last line, guaranteeing himself big bonus points. Second score is a 9.75 for an average of 9.756 for Nemov of Russia. Up next, Grigory Masutin of Ukraine. You'll remember he hurt his ankle on the vault in the warm-up in the compulsory competition. And I'm surprised he's competing on this event at all. Incredible front handspring, front layout with a one and a half. What a gutsy performance, just like Shannon Miller. He really held on to the dismount as well, didn't take the step. Here we get a good shot in slow motion. There's the front handspring. He has to do a front layout twist very fast to fit in the one and a half. Now watch, he really manipulates the landing to minimize the deduction, and I think to protect that ankle. Whoa, great score to start. 9-8 for Masutin. If he can nail another one, he'll be ahead of Nemov. Now, remember, it has to be a completely different vault. And is it ever different? Handspring, double front, one of the best in the world. No ill effects so of that bad ankle. Gregory Masutin, the 91 world champion. Wow, there's the handspring. Two saltos, completely blind landing. Look at that, incredible. 9712 for the second vault. 9756 is the average. Ties him now with Alexei Nemov. And with final say, Vitaly Sherbo of Belarus. Well, he really is a champion. And this is a good event for him. Ooh, I love that look of intensity. He knows what he's up against. He knows what the others have scored. Oh, a good Yurchenko double twist, but check the distance. And actually, he looks down. He does check the distance. He's a little short. He won't get those valuable bonus points. Round off onto the board, back handspring. A beautiful double twist, but watch where he lands. Much shorter than Nemov. Vault champion from the 94 and 93 Worlds, 9712 for Sherbo on the first attempt. 
Now he has to throw a different vault. I wonder if he'll throw the Sherbo. And he does. Oh, it's nice to see that vault back again. Nice smile from Sherbo, but Grigory Masutin is doing the celebrating. Sherbo's score a 9-6-1-2 for an average of 9-6-6-2. He'll have to settle for the bronze. Nemov and Masutin together share the gold medal. When we return, the most charismatic figure in gymnastics, Bella Caroli, is back. We'll have a chance to talk to the most successful coach in history next from Sabai. Does flimsy, tangled up, hard to store plastic wrap drive you crazy? Introducing Easy Wrap 1000, the easy way to handle plastic wrap. Easy Wrap lets you get just the right amount of wrap. You waste less and you'll never search for the end again. Easy Wrap always leaves the perfect amount to grasp. Easy Wrap's 1000 foot refill replaces all this. You'll save up to 50%. Perfect in the microwave, fridge, or freezer, Easy Wrap wraps up convenience and savings. Easy Wrap is available at these fine stores. Does flimsy, tangled up, hard to store plastic wrap drive you crazy? Introducing Easy Wrap 1000, the easy way to handle plastic wrap. Easy Wrap lets you get just the right amount of wrap. You waste less and you'll never search for the end again. Easy Wrap always leaves the perfect amount to grasp. Easy Wrap's 1000 foot refill replaces all this. You'll save up to 50%. Perfect in the microwave, fridge, or freezer, Easy Wrap wraps up convenience and savings. Easy Wrap is available at these fine stores. Air Canada, welcome to our world. We carry you to places familiar and exotic. Along the way, we carry the teams, the players and the athletes who can hush thousands or bring them roaring to their feet. Air Canada is a sponsor of many premium events in the world of sports and is now helping to bring you the best in the world of gymnastics. At Cardwell, we know that a house is not always a home. Living with someone who abuses alcohol or other drugs can make you resentful and angry. Often you accept the guilt and blame for problems and feel powerless about your partner's behavior. No matter how you change yourself, their drinking continues. The marriage quits working and your hurt continues. Keep the home fires bright with some help from counselors who understand what you mean. Cardwell, phone 764-5000. He is more at home at center stage than the young women he leads to international stardom. Bella Caroli is the defining persona of gymnastics, the most talked about figure in the sport. Caroli's autobiography, Feel No Fear, traces an impoverished Romanian upbringing. It reveals his aggressive formative years as a boxer. A battling spirit Caroli translated into a remarkable career in coaching. Rigid and demanding, he created Little Miss Perfect. Nadia Comaneci was nearly flawless for Romania at the Montreal Olympics, but it was Bella Caroli who pulled the strings. By 1984, in his adopted home of America, Caroli had created Mary Lou Retton, another Olympic champion. It was a perfect story scripted by the calculating coach, the American dream come true. Kim's Meskel won the 91 World Championship, but couldn't convert at the Olympics. Her mentor, Bella Caroli, suddenly retired. There was public criticism over his methods. Now, Caroli defiantly returns. Even to this day, you are the most compelling figure in the sport, the most talked about yeah. figure in the sport. Not an athlete, but you, a coach. Why is that? It's a tough question. Uh, probably because I was uh, the one who resisted for so long time, and uh, the way how I started coaching in uh, a strong, communist system then converted into a strong capitalist system i mean the two different sides of the world and probably because i managed to do something what nobody has done uh, to create a olympic champion in one side and create another olympic champion on another side probably that was captivating and captured the attention of the people i know in your book uh, feel no fear you said after 92 in the olympics when kim zemesko couldn't do it you said it was time to go because I didn't like the way gymnastics was going in the U.S. I was tired of the circus. What's brought you back? What is there left to do for you? You don't realize how much you love the sport till uh, you are not out of it. <laughs> when you're getting out, then you realize, well, you spend your life. You're still a professional. 
and I consider myself a professional. My heart's still beating for my athlete and my, the sport uh, in general. And uh, I felt an emptiness uh, in this particular past two years, even though I was conducting summer camps and then doing a lot of gymnastic related things, but high performance still is unique. It's a unique emotion. It's unique satisfaction when you see your product performing on the floor and, and you are enjoying the satisfaction and the defeat on the same way. So uh, when Kim, my little girl, the one who was little girl in 91, but the one who grew up now, she's a 19 years old young woman, she expressed her desire to come back. I said, well, I can't refuse you, Kimbo, to don't coach. So I decided to stand behind her. But at the meantime, they were the young ones, the one who grew up in the gym, the one uh, former teammates of Kim, the ones who were little babies in 92, but the ones who grow into 14 and 15, and they enjoy this small little team. So right now, one of the, the one is right here, the little Dominic Mochano, who is performing. And Kim is in preparation, and hopefully 96, we're going to have a game of your girls out on the floor. <laughs> I know you talk about Kim Zemesko, the world champion, and uh, you've coached uh, Nadia Komanich and Mary Lou Retton, the Olympic champions. You've had more success in this sport than any other coach. And some people say you're a genius, and you've had trouble this year because some people say you're a tyrant and they question you. What do you say to them? Well, uh, the genius status is not a, something what you assume or what you are getting or you can buy. You have to work for it. Uh, I believe uh, any kind of major achievement is a tremendous, a tremendous effort is standing behind. And I guarantee whatever I produced in my life uh, took a tremendous effort. And now, if I'm back, I will not get easy and I will not uh, sell myself cheap or, or my efforts cheap. So I'm trying to produce again another uh, uh, young, uh, strong athlete, the one who might confirm, the ones who are skeptical now what uh, I'm coming back from retirement, what I'm capable as former retiree. And uh, that's going be, gonna to be coming up in 96, most likely. Steve Nuno, who's one of your colleagues and one of your rivals, yeah. says, given the technical knowledge, you could coach a basketball team to a championship. You could coach just about anything. Why is it still gymnastics? What draws you to this sport? Gymnastics is a unique, it's a very unique sport. It is, I strongly believe, is the highest expression of the human capabilities. It is dance, it is art, it is expression, it's public appeal, sex appeal, everything what is the gorgeous in the human nature, in the human being, is out on the floor. You see those young athletes performing so high, difficult stunts, then you freeze, I and mean, you have goosebumps. At the same time, they smile. They are artists. The music is going. Gosh, what can be most gorgeous and more impressive sport in the world but gymnastics? I love it. I love it, and I, I always will. One more thing. You've changed your mind on this. You said at one point about a year ago, you said, Maybe it will be the experienced and the graceful who will now rule the sport of gymnastics. And you come here with Dominic Mosiano, who is a little pixie, one of the kitty core, as you called them. Will she rule the sport? Is there room still for the young and the acrobatic gymnast? I think um, always was a room for everybody and always will have place for everybody. I don't want to say this sport is only a kid sport. I don't want to say it's only place for the very young one. I would say, and I remember those times when older one, Nadia was 19, Tony Van was the most gorgeous, the greatest athlete ever of her life. And I remember many other ones coming back, Tony, Tony won and performing gorgeously. No, this sport is everybody's sport. And as long you have the power, you have the dedication and the desire to put up the effort, and that tremendous, tremendous, insistent way of performing and preparing, then you have a chance. In spite of all of the heat you've taken in the past couple of years, in spite of all that, you sound like you're happy to be back. I'm happy to be back, honestly. Thank you. You're welcome. He is an interesting character and has been criticized a great deal in the past couple of years. He's very tough on gymnasts, as he is on his new superstar, 14-year-old Dominique Musiano. She is the youngest national champion in the history of the United States. And Scott, she's terrific on this event. She starts right off showing some of her Romanian heritage. That mount is called a syllabus after Romanian superstar Daniela Syllabus.
For a young athlete, she has tremendous confidence on this event, the toughest event of all. All the gymnasts show a tumbling line, and this is Dominique's. Back handspring, layout, 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 three layouts. And in Bella's own words, she is showing no fear. Fifth all around here at the World Championship. Should mention that she is coached on the beam as she gets it back together by Marta Caroli, Bella's wife. Oh, Scott, you're absolutely right about that. In fact, all of Bella's champions have been coached by Marta on beam and floor. And here you can see her work. Beautiful punch front salto, very precise. That's her little acro gym series. Nice jump into an Emilian chick, backhand spring quarter. She's just so young, but doesn't seem to be bothered at all by the pressure of her very first world championships. And that's what's so neat about Dominique. This is fun to her. She really enjoys what she's doing. 10,000 people in this arena right now, all eyes focused on Dominique Musiano. This is the only event going on. Remember, that beam is four inches wide. Now she heard the bell. She's got 10 seconds to get off. Perfect. Round up, double back, salto. She just turned 14, Dominique Musiano of the United States, Little Mo of China heading up towards the beam. Dominique Musiano is coming off and into the arms of Bella Caroli, her mentor and coach. 9837, and that makes the American champion very happy. Little Mo of China, silver on the uneven bar. She had trouble here on the beam. Mo is the queen of the beam. This is her mount, named after Canadian Larissa Lowing. One arm pressed down, beautifully done. I think Larissa would be very proud. But the reason Mo is the queen of the beam is that her routine has everything in perfect proportion. She's daring, elegant, innovative, pure excellence. Talked about the trouble she had in the all-around competition. A 9-3-1-2 on the beam for little Mo. She missed her dismount. And you know that's got to be on her mind. The routine was perfect, and she got so excited she over-rotated the dismount. This is her second chance to be a world champion. Now this is her tumbling line. Round off straight body layout, better than anyone else in the world. Now watch this. That's a Yang Bo jump named after one of her former teammates, superstar Yang Bo. Just as good as Mo on beam, and interestingly enough, had the same problem. She was never the world champion on balance beam because she too over-rotated the dismount. And here it comes, that all-important dismount. This is where she blew it yesterday. But not today. Queen of the beam, little Mo. She nails it. Patented smile. She's ecstatic with her routine. One more look. Now, the reason why this round of straight body layout is so good is, of course, the height. But she doesn't pike it down like all the gymnasts do. That's perfect. Mociano had a 9-8-3-7-9-9 for Little Mo on the beam. And that will be tough for the defending world champion on beam to top Shannon Miller of the United States. During the optional, she had trouble with her ankle. Um, well, I think going in, I was really just focusing one event at a time. And I definitely wanted to do bars because that didn't really hurt that bad. So once I got through the bars, I wanted to do a beam routine because I wanted to try and get into beam finals. And um, I thought it was okay. I made the decision with my coach to go ahead and do the dismount that I hurt my ankle on. And um, then just kind of everything kind of kept going. And so when I went to floor, they had to take out some of my passes, so it wasn't a full floor routine. But I did what I could do because I knew that my score was going to count for the team. It was a very gutsy performance by Shannon Miller in the team competition. She dearly loved to win the beam, though. Oh, that's for sure. And you know, Scott, I am just as impressed with Shannon Miller now, with or without a gold medal. She really understands the definition of gymnastics, and it's not just about winning or losing. She takes pride in what she does. She's the best she can be all the time. She really gives of, of herself, and that's what makes her such a champion. 
just working really well on the beam. She's got years of experience, lots of confidence, can cover a little minor mistake like that. No one even notices. Coached by Steve Nuno and of course Peggy Littick does the coaching for Shannon on the beam. Peggy Littick is a great beam coach and Shannon Miller is certainly proof of that. That was her tumbling line, back handspring layout layout. Now she's got to be thinking about that ankle because it was on this event on the dismount that she heard it. That's a Miller. She and Peggy together developed that beautiful, innovative skill. Second all around at the Barcelona Olympics, two times the world champion, 93 in Birmingham and 94 in Brisbane. And here's the dismount round, a full in back out. She doesn't take it out, goes for it all. Well, an inspired performance, but I'm not sure it's enough to beat Little Mo or Dominique Musiano. 9-7-3-7 for a very gutsy and classy performer in Shannon Miller. Lilia Podkopayeva continues to add to her medal total. And if anyone can beat Mo, it's Lilia. She is just as good on this event. Impressive start so far. Her mount is very blind. Punch front. Beautiful jump work. Everything is perfect with Lilia. Reigning all-around world champion, won the beam final at the European Cup. Wow, that's a great tumbling line. Two back handsprings through to a pike, Shen Flick, named after the former Chinese superstar. That's her little acro gym series. Lovely dance work. You can see her classical. Oh, believe it or not, that slight hesitation, that little wobble could be enough to hand Mo the gold medal. Mo Hulan of China has recorded a 9-9. And I think the judges are going to have to take off another half a tenth for that as well. Beautiful amplitude on her jump series. The judges require all gymnasts to do two jumps in a row. Lilia has one of the toughest dismounts in the book, like Shannon Miller. She performs a round off, full twisting double back. Nice finish to the routine, but there were a couple of weak moments along the way. 9837, still a tremendous score, but just not enough to beat Mohulan of China. Little Mo wins the gold. Podkopayeva and Mosiano will tie for the silver. Mm. When we return, the men draw the line at the P-Bars and the relentless Vitaly Sherbo continues his quest for a golden payday at the Sundome. Just how does Sprint Canada give you the most for the least? Let me explain. First, adding Sprint Canada long distance to your local service will save you 50% on every call to the three numbers you talk to most each month. That's one number in Canada, one in the U.S., and one overseas. Sprint Canada splits the cost. Second, our savings are always in addition to regular weekend or evening discounts. A discount on a discount? Amazing. Third, you'll save on all your other long distance, too. That's what I call the most for the least. But there's more to Sprint Canada than guaranteed savings, like our high-quality fiber-optic long-distance network and our friendly, helpful customer service people. That's right. We're here to help 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Just call. And that's all you have to do to sign up with Sprint Canada. Just call us anytime, day or night, at 1-800-816-MOST. Get the most for the least. Call Sprint Canada. Let me see now. Bingo cards, bingo dabbers, my drink, and the TV on CIPA. I'm all set. Are you ready to play Optimus TV Bingo? Just purchase your bingo cards at participating sponsors and you're one step closer. Plus, you'll be one step closer to maybe winning $3,000. Every Saturday, a minimum of $1,000 will be given away. So get your cards and get ready to play Optimus TV Bingo, Saturdays at 6.30 on CIPA TV. The City of Prince Albert wishes to advertise that commencing October 23, 1995, winter hours will be implemented at the Waste Disposal Grounds as follows. 7.30 a.m. to 5.45 p.m., Monday to Saturday inclusive. 
closed Sundays. Residents are advised that the city's traffic bylaw requires that all wastes hauled to the waste disposal grounds are to be covered. Your cooperation is requested to help keep our city clean. No, I'm in Sabai, Japan, and the Air Canada World Gymnastics Championships, the individual event finals on the last day here. You know, it was back in 1984 that Bart Connor helped lead the United States to team gymnastics gold at the Los Angeles Olympics. He went on to win another gold on the parallel bars, thus cementing his place as an American gymnastics icon. Throughout the competition here at the Sun Dome, Bart's been watching the drama unfold as a commentator for ABC Sports. And Bart joins us now in our broadcast location. Bart, thanks for stopping by, first of all. But let's talk about another gymnastics legend, right. Vitaly Sherbo. He looks like he's never going to stop. He really is an amazing athlete. And I think he's one of the first gymnasts I've ever seen that has tried to make his living from gymnastics. He thinks like a professional. He knows if he scores well and gets medals and earns results, that he's going to be able to market himself. So he sells himself for exhibitions and competitions all around the world. He's trying to provide for his family off his gymnastic success. And he's such an animal. You can always count on him to be right there when the medals are given out. Another one that's really right there at this time is Li Xiao Shuang. I was really impressed with him winning the individual all-round and leading his team to a gold medal. Do you think this could be the beginning of a dynasty for China? Well, Carol, it certainly could because, uh, as we have seen, when the Chinese emerged onto the gymnastic scene back in 1979, they were spectacular but inconsistent. Everybody has been worried that as soon as they start to get consistent, the rest of the world better watch out. And I think that's a, a good forecast as to what we might see next year in Atlanta because uh, they're wonderful and they're technically so precise and they're exciting to watch and now they're getting the consistency and so boy everybody better stand back and uh, make sure when you're counting up the medals you look for the Chinese to be in there. Hey, you know what it was 11 years ago Bart that you won those gold medals but you look like you could still be out there on the floor today and giving these guys a go. <laughs> no Thanks way, for stopping That's by. That's for sure. Yeah, nice to see you. Carol right. you too. From People's Republic of China. And you know Bart you talked about the Chinese. Here's yeah. Wang Li Ping of Hubei 22 years old. Part of a great team. They're just so deep. Oh boy super depth on this team and Huang has a high flying P-bar routine that was a double back in the pike position he is the only male gymnast here to throw that trick now you know why he's wearing those armbands tremendous impact and he has another one in the tuck position P-bars used to be a fairly static event but right now with these big release moves these guys are throwing it's rivaling high bar well, the Chinese won team gold, and you can see why. They just have so many great gymnasts competing here in Sabai. Wang Li Ping, 9.75 on the parallel bars. Now another one of the Asian gymnasts and a local hero here, Hikaru Tanaka of Japan. Tanaka is almost a rock star here. All the females in the audience scream every time he sticks a dismount. A phenomenal gymnast. And there's his double back in the tuck position. Now, he does it from swing, so it's a bell. Oh, beautiful, beautiful execution. Another one. Come a long way. He was 37th on the P-bars in Brisbane at the last World Championships, and now he's in the final. With nice form, I might add. That's a Bilosercev. Very similar to a skill developed by Brad Peters, a Canadian gymnast. Just the dismount now. Double pike with a great landing. First time the World Championships have been in Asia and the Japanese fans are loving it. Their team won silver. Hikaru Tanaka 9725 on the P-bars. Ivan Ivankov of Belarus, 24 years old. And he is the world champion from 1994 all around. Had trouble in the all around competition here, finishing 18th. It has been a tough week for him but he is a phenomenal gymnast and really well respected with tricks like that. Beautiful double back in the tuck position. That's called a Morisu after a Japanese gymnast. Nice heely toss. He's working the bar really well. I think this has been a good week of lessons for him. It's been a tough lesson. Beautiful back toss, double pike dismount. Look at that determination. Well, they call him Baby Sherbo back home. The contemporary of Vitaly Sherbo, the other great Belarusian gymnast. And Sherbo's headed up to the bars now. 9687 for Ivankov on the P bars. And there he is, Vitaly Sherbo. 
Now you can tell by the armbands he's got something special planned. Obviously something with a lot of impact. He starts his routine with a moy. And there it is, a front double pike salto. Beautifully done. Healy twirl, healy twirl. He's so impressive. And what's impressive to the judges is the fact that this routine doesn't stop. He just keeps going and going. Beautiful stutz to one bar. And again, the Sherbo landing. Rare that you'll see him wear those upper arm bands, but as you talked about impact and the release skills, great routine by Vitaly Sherbo and the other guys. Well, they know they might be done here. Yes, sir, 9-8-1-2 for Vitaly Sherbo. Ivan Ivankov, his teammate, finishes fifth. Sherbo takes the gold. Wang Li Feng of China, the silver. Hikaru Tanaka, the bronze medal. Vitaly Sherbo on top again. It's such a familiar picture. Sherbo, a lasting image in this sport. As is Nelly Kim, one of the outstanding figures from Belarus in world championship history. She won the all-around title in 1979. Also in her resume is Olympic gold for the Soviet Union from Montreal. She remains a powerful judge in the sport. When we return to Sabai, the women dance. Tired of working your fingers to the bone, rubbing and polishing? Get rid of those messy old cleaners. Get into Royal Silver, the revolutionary new cleaning kit from Supertech. Royal Silver instantly cleans and restores all your fine brass, silver, and gold to its original luster. The secret is in its scientifically designed magnetic plate. Watch this amazing demonstration. Place the magnetic plate in hot water, add a little household cleaner, and presto, Royal Silver works like magic. Tarnish disappears before your very eyes. Just imagine all the jobs Royal Silver can do for you. Heirloom cutlery set like new in seconds and there's no harsh chemical odor as a matter of fact royal silver is gentle enough for your finest gold and silver jewelry even copperware will look like new royal silver penetrates the most intricate designs cleaning and protecting remember all you do is touch the special plate royal silver does the rest save time save money with royal silver comes complete with everything you see here royal silver only from supertech royal silver is also available at canadian tire zellers kmart safeway bargain shop home hardware and buy way. If you understand this sign language, take comfort. We understand it too. When sinus pressure builds, it causes sinus pain. For relief, take Sinutab. Sinutab doesn't just relieve the sinus pain, it relieves the congestion and pressure that causes it. Sinutab, a welcome sign of relief. Will the next generation find this planet worth living on? Smoke means progress, we used to say. Now we know better. But can business change its ways and still make a profit? Better light bulbs, eggshells for sale, new jackets from old bottles, reused car parts. Watch Greening Business, Thursday on The Nature of Things. The Eshizen Coastline National Park in nearby Suruga. This is one of the most picturesque areas of Japan. While in Nikko, I had a chance to catch up to Dave King, the former Calgary Flames coach who is now working with Japan's ice hockey program. Dave has some interesting things to say about the nature of the game here and how he longs for the NHL. We'll present that in the weeks to come on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Right now, though, we're moving to the women's floor, and this is Ludovic Fernon of France, a last-minute replacement for Shannon Miller of the United States. And what a great moment this is for Ludovine and all of France. When Shannon had to pull out, Fernand was more than ready to go. Big double layout. She is making the most of this opportunity. She's known for her choreography. This is a really special routine, very creative. Shannon Miller, of course, out of the competition because of the bad ankle. Couldn't make it go any further. Front handspring, front full, front layout. She keeps it nicely in bounds. Oh, I like this routine. She's got a lot of charisma. And this is her first World Championship event final. But 
She's in the big league now, and she's going to have to have a big third line. Oh, she does. I think good things have only just begun for Ludovine. Ludovine Fernand of France gets her chance at the World Championships and makes good. And she tumbles with the best of them. This is her double layout way up in the air. The second salto still lifting. Great landing. Oh, she's special. The alternate coming in, a 9625 going out, puts a smile on Ludovine Fernand's face. And now Gina Gojan, 18 years old, of Romania, solid on the floor each and every time. And in contrast to Fernand, you will not get a smile out of Gina. Nice double layout. She has been criticized for not being more expressive, but she says she likes to prefer to concentrate. When you're watching Gina, everything is technically perfect. The judges really cannot find any deductions. So whether you like her very serious style or not, there are no deductions to be found. Bronze medals in successive world championships in Brisbane, Australia and Birmingham, England. The choice of music is always interesting for Gina Gojan. And I think it suits her. It allows her just to be serious and concentrate on really nice tumbling lines like that one. Front tumbling has become really popular in women's gymnastics. But I still think it would be nice to see a smile or two. This is her last line. Full twisting double back, and again, it's absolutely perfect. There are no deductions. Well, great technical merit on the part of Gina Gojan. As you said, not as expressive as many, but hardly a flaw in that routine. Here we get a second look at her tumbling line. There's the round off back handspring. Now she skyrockets into the air, double layout. Keeps her form, anticipates that landing. Doesn't get any better than that. Hard to deny skill and ability. 9825 puts Gina Gojan into the lead on the floor. Ji Liya, 14 years old, the youngest member of the Chinese team, has her chance on the floor. And when China showed up with big tumbling and big vault, everybody was surprised. And Liya is no exception. Watch this. Wow, full twisting double layout. This is a very high spirited routine for Lia. She's a very peppy, beautiful jumper. Part of the Chinese team that won the silver medal here. That was a surprise silver medal for China. But I think it just goes to show the depth and their focus on their two week events, tumbling and vault. They're going to be in the medals in Atlanta, challenging the Americans for gold. Score to beat is a 9.825 by Gina Gojan of Romania. They've really been focusing on their power and strength development, and that's why their tumbling has really improved. But the last line is their true test. If they can throw a big trick in the third line, they've come a long way. And a full twisting double back, that's big enough. Just turned 14 years old, and she's at center stage to 10,000 people at the Sun Dome. Gina Gojan, the leader so far, Awaiting the result of Ji Liya of China. This is her first tumbling line, and it is a beauty. Full twisting, double layout. Incredible power for that line. Little short, but look how she works the landing. Nine, six, seven, five for the young Chinese gymnast. 
which means that Gina Gojan of Romania takes the gold medal. Ji Li Ya will hang on for the silver. Ludovine Fernand, a last minute replacement, wins the bronze. There's Yuri Kecki, the ringmaster from Italy. He's on Italian radio, a national hero back home. He's been besieged by interview requests and he's met every one of them. What a great champion. And so we move to the final event here at the World Championships, the men's high bar. Krasimir Dunev of Bulgaria will go up first. Dunev has a jam-packed routine, and when I say jam-packed, you're, you're going to have to count the number of releases he does. That's a Tkachev. There's one. Straddle two. Straddle three. Hopful four. Hopful five. And a ginger. His coach is just standing by watching it all. A lot of the guys you'll see, two, maybe three release skills in a routine. This guy's had six already. And it was six in a row. That's what's so incredibly impressive about his high bar routine. Oh, double twisting, double layout. Krasimir Dunev was 40th on the high bar at Brisbane, the last World Championships. You can bet he'll place higher than that here. Here's a look at his release moves. That's the first one, Tkachev. Then he straddles the Tkachev. Heading into his third, but remember, he had three more after that. Well, he hardly touched the bar, but a 9.75 for Krasimir Dunev after all those release skills. Andreas Vecker of Germany, 25 years old, a perennial second place finisher, has one more shot on the high bar. He really is a favorite of a lot of people in the sport, but again, he's had some tough competitions and never really pulled it together. He has good style, beautiful amplitude. Look at that Kovac. I think he's going to throw another one. The first one was that good, why not? Really showing great amplitude. Nice to catch him. High bar is becoming an event where the least amount of time you can spend on the high bar, the better. These guys are flying all over the place. Finish 10th all around here. Dismount now. And it's a big one. Full twisting double layout, and he rocks the landing. Well, Germany's had a tough world championships. Andreas Becker, their last chance here at Sabai. His specialty event is the rings, but he may have done it on the high bar. His Kovacs is so good, he'll slap his legs, open it up, and catch with virtually straight arms. That's exactly what the judges want to see. Oh, yeah, 9-8-1-2 for the German, Becker. Puts him into the lead. Only a couple left who can catch him. One is Xinjing Zhang of China, 18 years old. Eighth in the all-around competition. The Chinese are always strong in the high bar. And Jing is following a, a very strong tradition of excellence, execution, and big amplitude. Oh, nice layout to Kachev. Now, his coach stood in, and again, that's all right. There's no deduction for that. Just for safety, moral support. Working the routine really well. Big dismount, double twisting, double layout. Well, the big dismount. But it certainly didn't have the number of release skills that Dunav the Bulgarian had. 9.75 is the result. Final competitor, Yoshiaki Hadakata of Japan, another local hero. The crowd will love this. They've been loving this team all week. I've never seen such a supportive crowd. It's been terrific. He's getting ready for his biggest release move here. It's a Kovac. One of the highest ones we've seen all week. Into a beautiful laid out Tkachev. Trying to catch Andreas Vecker of Germany. And he's certainly working hard enough for it. This is a great routine. Showing his eagle grip giants, that's a requirement but he's getting ready for a move that's all his own. Triple back dismount, the toughest one in the book. Atakata of Japan, 9775, enough to catch the silver medal. Andreas Becker will take the gold. It's been a tough world championships for the German, but Becker finally breaks through. Uh, this can man gar nicht beschreiben, wie ich mich fühle. 
äh, seit 89 bin ich dabei und immer nur Vize-Weltmeister und so. Dann Ringe lief hier nicht so gut, der Mehrkampf lief nicht so gut. Mannschaft hat man ein bisschen unglücklich getornt. Und jetzt noch Gold, das ist eigentlich äh, das absolut Unmögliche eigentlich für mich. An emotional and victorious Andreas Becker will lower the curtain on the 1995 world stage when we return to Sabah. I'll never forget that bright yellow slicker. Puddles wide as oceans. And that hot bowl of soup that had warmed you to your toes. Thank goodness Tim Hortons remembers too. Hi, Tom. Time for lunch. With freshly baked bread for sandwiches. This will hit the spot. And real stick to your ribs soups. Oh, it'll still warm those. Who says you can't go home again? I said I'm sorry. Wow, I'm just trying to be a I'll show you. I'll show you. Now we have more important things to worry about. Now, once again, does everyone know the layout? What if things get out of hand? We do what we always do. Okay? Let's do it. Air Canada, welcome to our world. We carry you to places familiar and exotic. Along the way, we carry the teams, the players, and the athletes who can hush thousands or bring them roaring to their feet. Air Canada is a sponsor of many premium events in the world of sports and is now helping to bring you the best in the world of gymnastics. The Air Canada World Gymnastics Championships from Sabai, Japan on CBC. Brought to you by Air Canada. Welcome to our world. There's the scene at the Sun Dome in Sabai as Andreas Becker of Germany accepts the gold medal for his outstanding routine on the men's high bar. What a competitive gymnastics championships this has been. 14 gold medals handed out in all. Eight different countries won those gold medals. What's happening now, Carol, is that the traditional gymnastic powers are having to compete on an even playing field with the rest of the world. No one country dominated, but on the men's side, one gymnast surely made his mark today. And that could only be Vitaly Sherbo winning two gold medals and one bronze, proving once again he truly is invincible. On the women's side, Romania won team gold, and it was Lilia Podkopaeva of Ukraine claiming the all-around title, but that didn't translate into more gold on event final day. She was really consistent yesterday to win the title, but today, by the time she reached the fourth event, you could see the fatigue setting in. But the comeback story has to be Little Mo from China finally winning the gold medal on balance beam, the same event that cost her the all-around title yesterday. There have been a lot of good routines today, a lot of talent out there. And all of that talent now looks ahead to the Olympics in Atlanta, less than one year away. We, of course, will be there to cover all the drama. Up next, it's the CFL on CBC from McMahon Stadium in Calgary, the Stampeders and Saskatchewan Rough Riders in an all-Canadian battle. Next Saturday, it's horse racing's most lucrative single day, the Breeders' Cup from Belmont Park in New York. That's live at 11 Eastern. And we'll return with the Subway World Gymnastics Challenge Saturday, December 2nd from Cops Coliseum in Hamilton. Until then, for Carol Orchard, I'm Scott Russell. For all our crew, thanks for watching and so long from the Sun Dome in Sabai. Discover constant quality.